Hi guys, how is everyone doing? It is Saturday evening, 6.47. <clears throat> I feel like a drowned rat today. I'm not feeling well at all. And I'm not really used to being sick, or I shouldn't say sick, not feeling well. You know, I've been on a good trajectory and stuff with like sobriety and just working hard and trying to take care of myself and seeing doctors and staying on my meds and blah, blah, blah. But I have also felt recently kind of a disturbance in the force. Pardon me, I'm wearing a camisole shapewear thing. I know it shows a lot, but who the hell cares? It's just the body, right? I have not been feeling right. And like I've been talking about bipolar, I've been talking about the weather, I've been talking about exposing myself to negative influences and my ambivalence about like quite frankly, my sponsor, and things like that. And I feel like it all kind of came crashing down on me last night. I came home from work um, feeling gross, like feeling these stomach pains and like this, you know how when you have anxiety and you get like nervous stomach and your stomach hurts and you're maybe a little nauseous, maybe you get a little diarrhea. Anyway, I came home and I was exhausted and um, uh, I took my Trazodone, which I don't always take, but um, it's prescribed. It's not narcotic or anything. It's a sleep aid. And I think it's also indicated in um, depression. Took my um, metformin, because I'm supposed to take one at night and one in the morning. It helps with my blood sugar regulation. No makeup today. It is what it is. And um, I felt gross last night. Like, I couldn't really sleep. I had horrible dreams. I woke, I was nauseous last night at work. I mean, I almost felt like I was going to hurl. But then in the middle of the night, I did hurl. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, let's keep it real here. I haven't gone to bed with a towel <laughs> nearby since my drinking days. You know, I don't always sleep great. I usually wake up really achy, but, you know, I sleep. And I get ready to do the whole damn thing again the next day with working and stuff. Excuse me. But... I vomited last night. I had other bathroom situations this morning. And I felt really achy, like like my body ached. And I was dizzy when I got up. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like the flu. This is, I don't know what this is, but I, I called out. There was no way I could go to work and pull a 14-hour day today. There was just no way. And I hate calling out because I know I'm counted on. I know the routines on the weekend. And uh, there's not usually other people that you can call last minute. And there was another girl on, but, you know, I don't like being there alone. So I didn't want to do that to her. Um, but there was no way I could do it. I felt really gross this morning. And um, so I called out. And then as per protocol with work, you have to go and get a COVID test. And uh, because I had a slight fever, basically, that's why. And um, I couldn't eat. Coffee made me nauseous. I didn't feel like smoking. You know, that's kind of like my routine in the morning. I call it the three C's or the four C's. Coffee, cigarette, cats, and candles. I wasn't even in a mood to light any candles. But anyway, um, and then my boss also said, get a Lyme disease test because that's going around too. And I don't think she meant it's contagious because it's not, but it just means a lot of people are getting Lyme disease. And it's like, I don't really go for walks. I don't walk a dog. I'm not ever in the woods and you know I haven't had any ticks on me but anyway I was so tired I tried to go back to sleep woke up still didn't feel good made all the necessary calls and stuff like that um felt bad felt guilty uh you know because I haven't really called out once since I've been sober so I waited a couple of hours I just totally chilled and vegged I just sat here on my recliner looking at YouTube and just Feeling really mopey, really depressed, really, ugh, this weather is just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me. But, um, so I went to urgent care, which was a pain in the ass because I forgot to pre-register and I forgot to, like, make an appointment. And I, I kind of knew in the back of my mind there may, might be a lot of people there. Um, but, um, I got a cab because I didn't even feel up to driving. And that cost 20 bucks. But, and then I waited there for a good 40 minutes or so. The nurse saw me. The doctor saw me. It was kind of like, 
we don't know what's going on. They they did the COVID swab, the rapid test. I don't have COVID. I knew I didn't. Uh, he palpated my stomach and abdomen, and it was tender and sore. And uh, my blood pressure was very low, and my urine has been very dark. Like, really dark. Like, brown. I don't mean to be gross, but it's distressing because, I mean, look what I always have with me. I drink a lot of water, guys. I put lemon in it. I feel like I've been trying to be healthier. Like, I feel like I've been taking my vitamins and I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to down all this tonight and then see if I still have weird colored pee. This is a gross video. Oops. And I'm like the great unwashed, you know, my teeth are brushed. Anyway, so uh, then I came back. I just sat outside for a little bit. Kept feeling these waves of depression falling over me. And, you know, again, no shame in my game. There's no stigma attached right now where there shouldn't be in 2021 with mental illness. Um, and a lot of this could even be like post-acute withdrawal syndrome from alcohol. They say it can last like a year. And I think I'm also kind of overworked and overtired and my body's trying to fight something. But it's very unusual for me to get diarrhea and nausea after eating normally for a day and I did take my Ozempic like four days ago but just one dose of it at, at the lowest dose you know I put the little needle in my gut and I press the the, the thing and 0 0.25 milligrams of Ozempic went in me there's no way I could be getting side effects from that already but I will talk to my doctor about that so the doctor at urgent care just kind of said it could be your gallbladder it could be um, gastritis, you know, just some kind of inflammation in your gut. It could be a lot of things, but just, you know, eat a bland diet, drink your water, get rest. Um, I got a note. I said, I need a return to work note. And it was kind of funny because his uh, assistant or the receptionist or whoever wrote it for July 19th, I think. And it's a good thing I read it before I passed it in because... If, if your doctor says that, you literally cannot return to work until you get the clearance. And I realized they made a typo and it was supposed to say July 12th, which is Monday. So long story short, that means I have tomorrow off, which I'm going to spend resting. I have a ton of things to do in my house, but I just don't have energy. I'm just going to let it go. And what's good about living alone is it doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. It's messy, but it's not unhygienic. You know, I always take the trash out and scoop the litter box at the very least. But um, but I don't get paid for time off. And it would have been 24 hours of work this weekend. And so I'm going to really feel that in my pocketbook next week. Or actually in two weeks. But I can't worry about that right now. Um, it's just weird to not feel good. For me to not have an appetite and just be like slightly on the edge of nausea and this pee thing and um, the doctor said if I don't start feeling better in a couple days to get my gallbladder scanned or to just see my GP and get all the necessary testing I really need to stop smoking for real and I'm not just saying that because um, you know it can cause bladder cancer not just lung cancer it, it, it can cause all kinds of things and it's just such a dumb habit I mean I don't have a smoking channel I don't get money for it. I know some of you guys like to watch it. My ex-boyfriend loved to see me smoke and everyone thinks it's just this prop that's sexy, but um, when you inhale, it's not good for you. And if someone really cares about you, they don't want you doing something unhealthy. So, um, and I've heard it can really affect like your urine pH or something and, and it can cause bladder cancer. One of my best friends from rehab, her mother died of that and she was a very, very heavy smoker for years. Even drinking this water makes my stomach feel weird. It's too late in the game for me to have a stricture. You know, I had gastric bypass surgery. Next month, it'll be 20 years I had it. So it's not like a stricture from that. Um, maybe it's a little bit of food poisoning. I don't know. I ate my own cooking at work. I ate some Brussels sprouts with riced cauliflower and some chopped up andouille sausage in it. Which, even though I don't really like processed meats, I love, for some reason, andouille sausage. People think it's the same as kielbasa, but it's not. It has a much, 
I don't know, richer, smokier flavor. It doesn't taste like a big old salty hot dog on steroids. <laughs> Keep my love life out of it. I'm kidding. So I just wanted to say hello. Um, I feel like a drowned rat. I know I don't look good, but it doesn't matter. This is real life. I'm just sort of putting it out there that like to anyone else who suffers from depression, which manifests in physical ways, um, I don't know what to say. I'm babying myself today. You know what I mean? I've just been sitting here, sipping on water and um, emailing people, texting friends, hanging out on Facebook, looking at YouTube uh, videos, listening to jo Joni Mitchell, playing with my cats, and just enjoying being home because I'm very rarely home for a full day, let alone a weekend. And uh, I'm probably going to try to go to a meeting tomorrow night. If I don't, I'm not going to feel guilty or bad about it. Um, I don't like trying to maintain my sobriety just to please my sponsor. She and I recently had words several times because I know she means well and I know she's like, quote, doing her job. But I have a very hard time with hard and fast rules and rhetoric and pedantic, didactic, sorry for the big words, but you know, that kind of all or nothing speech that, that sounds like someone's just reading from a script to you. Um, you know, she made a comment about she doesn't see me at meetings lately and I can't just work myself to death. And, you know, you're supposed to plan your life around meetings, not meetings around your life and, uh, you know, relapse and this and that. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm not relapsing. I'm not drinking. She doesn't even know that I still go to Zoom meetings. Um, She's a big stickler on in-person, and that's great when you can do it. But I told her, you know, sometimes I need to go to the dentist, go to the doctor, get my car recalibrated. You know, right now I'm still on a waiting list to get my car looked at. You know, sometimes I need to do laundry and go grocery shopping. And, you know, everything also can't just be meetings and work, meetings and work, meetings and work. I sometimes need downtime to myself. I feel myself getting all hot about it now again. It's not the idea of not liking to go to meetings. It's this idea that you're some kind of a slacker if you can't go to a lot of them or that I'm taking my sobriety for granted or I'm on a pink cloud or there's a lot of people that would disagree with me and say I'm in delusion or denial. But there's also a saying in AA that says to thine own self be true and listen to your belly barometer and your sponsor's not perfect and you're not married to them. You don't have to keep the same sponsor. And um, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We're all fallible. We all need tough love at times and TLC at times. And, you know, I'm not trying to pull a fast one on anyone. I don't stay home from meetings so I can drink. I haven't touched a drop since November 19th of last year. Now, am I waiting for an award for that? No. You know, I know that's like a virgin compared to someone that's got 16 years sobriety. But each and every one of us is still one arm's length away from a drink if we, if we all believe we're actually alcoholics. Do I have food on my face? Probably. I don't give a shit right now. That's why my boobs are hanging out. Um, where was I going with that? Just the idea of the money basket reminds me of tithing. The being checked up on all the time reminds me of the cult when the apostles used to always ask us where we were. Are we going to meetings? Where's the envelope of money? Are you working on yourself? You know, oh, you're feeling too good. It must be your pride and ego. Oh, you're feeling too depressed. It must be demons of self-pity. I mean, this was the stuff I fucking grew up with from the age of five to my escape at 26. It's no joke. I mean, I touch upon it here and there, but these were the things that wounded me. These were the things that left scars in my mind and heart and soul and psyche. And there are things about AA, and I'm not meaning to offend any viewers who, I don't know who watches me anymore or not, but like if you're in recovery or 12 steps, I'm not insulting it. I'm saying that it is different to be in a group or a fellowship when you grew up in a cult. I happen to know a lot of groups on Facebook and other places that definitely believe AA is a cult. I even have books about it. Some written by very respected author friends of mine. And when I feel that anxiety all the time about getting to a meeting and going there early to make coffee and call my sponsor who doesn't even really want to hear 
from me. It's like she does, but she doesn't. Because whenever I talk about making my amends or doing this or doing that, she stops me up short. And it's like, you're supposed to discuss that with your sponsor first. And I can't stand when people talk about themselves in the third person. I cannot stand it. We give ourselves and other people these labels and titles. And it's like, no, no. The, the book, the, the text of AA doesn't even talk about sponsors by name. It's supposed to be someone that you can confide in and feel like you can trust if you're struggling with something or you feel tempted to drink or... But I'll be goddamned if I'm going to call her and apologize for working. You know, she, she makes these comments like they're working you like a dog. They're taking advantage of you. You know, oh, it's great to pay your bills, but blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, it is great to pay my bills. I, I'm a single self-supporting person that has a lot of bills and a big rent. And is AA paying it? No. Today I missed out on money and I had to pay for an Uber and a cab and my copay and you know things are just expensive and I guess I sound like a big hypocrite because I also buy things a lot but none of us are perfect thank god I still write poetry and I listen to my music and and I allow myself to just veg out in front of this national inquirer style tv and uh, I have been watching some good movies lately though and I have to be careful when I'm in these blue moods to not watch really deep heavy movies because I'm very empathic and I enter in you know I enter into negative emotions and positive and the weather just makes me feel gray inside and just um weekends in general weekends have always been a bugaboo for me which I think is why I I often work those long weekend shifts because it makes me feel like I'm doing something that I'm useful that I'm productive that I'm earning some money and I'm not just sitting around saying I don't have friends my kids are busy and they're grown and, uh, you know, I'm not at a barbecue. I'm not at a party. And, you know, the funny thing about being an extroverted introvert or an introverted extrovert is that you think you want company. You think you're lonely all the time. But when push comes to shove, I like being home alone. I like being surrounded by my pile of laundry and my books and and stuff like that. I don't even know what was in that box. I got a bunch of shapewear from this company called Under Outfit. Under Outfit. And it's like, you know, the slimming bike shorts and the, um, you know, the camisoles that are supposed to stretch all the way down over your gut and not ride up. And guess what? This thing, the band of it is like right under my tits. You don't want to know what I paid for this shit. It's 10% spandex. You know, usually I like 3 to 5%, but this stuff is like no joke. And it's good under a dress. I mean, it's good under something where you want to smooth yourself out. But today I'm like, I don't give a shit. And I was so glad they didn't try to weigh me at urgent care. They uh, took my blood pressure, which was like 102 over 67. And that was it. No blood work or anything. He just listened to my heart, listened to my lungs, took my temp, which was normal. Palpated my gut, which feels sore and weird. Um, it could just be an inflammation syndrome. You know, I do have a lot of issues. What time is it? I've been prattling on about my weird day for 19 minutes, you guys. Probably lost half of you. All three of you. And so now I'm going to think about going to bed, believe it or not. I really am. I'm going to drink that water and I think just curl up in my nest of pillows. On my relatively comfortable bed. In my darkened room. Because one of the best things I ever purchased in my life was blackout blinds, blackout curtains. And just let myself feel this mood until it passes. And uh, I don't know why my nurse practitioner hasn't called in my Lamictal yet. It's a very important medication. I'm not out yet. I've got like two days worth. But um, with this mood I'm in, I don't want to start messing with meds. And as far as the Ozempic, I'm still on the fence about it. I hope it works. That could be why it's messing with my appetite. But again, I only had one injection of it. I feel like my nose is closing up as we speak. What am I going through? Like massive hypochondria all of a sudden? Ugh, I do feel like having a cigarette. I'm so tired, you guys. You know I'm tired when I don't 
No, I did put earrings in today. I just, I took them off, actually. I had the presence of mind to wear these when I went to urgent care. And uh, the cab driver, I thought I was going to die because he drove so fast. And then my son, my dear son, ordered me an Uber because he has the Uber app and I don't to pick me up. And she was such a nice woman. And she called me baby twice and said, God bless you when I got out. And, you know, that feels good. Little tiny acts of kindness, little words like that. It just feels good, you know, being called baby by a stranger and being told, God bless you. And I said, God bless you too. And I tipped her. You know, supposedly you don't have to tip an Uber driver, but I always do. I tip everybody. I'm a very good tipper. And the one freaking day I didn't put money in the goddamn AA basket was because I had no cash on me. And my sponsor's like, oh, you really have to do this, but I'll put in a couple bucks for you. She doesn't understand. I've been in and out of the program for 12 years. Like, I know how the deal works. You know, yes, I relapsed. I relapsed often. I don't know what else to say. I don't blame AA for it. I blame me. But I also don't think that that is the only way to sobriety. You know, there is medication uh, methods. There's the Sinclair method. There's smart recovery. There's doing it on your own. People have done it. You know, if you really research... AA history statistics for success the sobriety rate is only like 17% or something wait do I have that right it has a very low long term success rate and I don't like the idea of your whole life has to be AA and meetings and going to these depressive basements and churches that smell like dust and bad coffee and everyone just sits there and like I'm an alcoholic and here's how much I fucked up in my life. And then I have this godlike sponsor and the room saved me. And it's, it bothers me lately. It really does. It really feels culty and I'm struggling. I'm putting it right out there, right on the old YouTube that I'm struggling, not struggling in the sense that I want to drink because I don't, I feel amazing not drinking. Even when I'm sick like this, even when like, for some reason my gut is burning right now. Um, I never had such acid indigestion as I did this morning. To, I, I ransacked my medicine cabinet. I like pulled stuff out of it because I couldn't find my Tums. And I'm like, I have to have Tums. I have to at least have Tums on hand. Um, I can't take Pepto-Bismol. It doesn't agree with me at all. But I took the Tums and then I went back to sleep. And I woke up thinking I'd feel good enough to go to work, but I didn't. So I called out and I think I've been feeling bad about it all day, but my boss isn't mad at me. I called her up twice and she's like, you're, you're one of my reliable ones. I'm not worried about you. You know, she, she found coverage tomorrow. So I'll go back at two on Monday and, uh, I left my laptop at work. So I've got to find a way to do my task stuff. I guess I'll have to resume that Monday. This is one of my longest videos, and I really feel like it's just me going on and on because I've been particularly lonely today. So I'm going to go, you guys. Thanks for listening to me. Peace out for now.